Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm Rand, a naturalist here at Baltimore Woods Nature Center in Marcellus, New York. And this week we're taking a look at some of the weird, wacky, wonderful things out here in nature. And one of them just happens to be growing on the log here next to me. This orange stuff is called slime mold. Now I realize that this thing is not much to look at. In fact, it looks kind of gross. But this is just one example of a slime mold that we could find here in central New York. Others include this one called Steminitis or the chocolate tube slime mold. Or this one called Fuligo or the dog vomit slime mold. Or if you want to be a little bit more appetizing with it, you could say scrambled egg slime mold. This last one is called wolf's milk slime mold. When they're young, wolf's milk slime molds are filled with this orangey pink goo. But what is this goo anyways, and what is a slime mold? They look like fungi, but they aren't closely related to them. They are in the eukaryote group, meaning that their cells have nuclei, like the cells of animals, plants, and fungi, while the prokaryotes have cells without a nucleus. So slime molds are unicellular eukaryotic organisms, Whew, say that ten times fast. And this is actually a pretty large group of organisms. But what makes slime molds special is how they work together. When the time comes when food is scarce, these independent cells can come together, sometimes fusing to form one giant cell with many nuclei, called a plasmodium. The cells of other slime molds don't fuse together but they act independently, working together to make structures that they never could have formed on their own. Whether plasmodial or cellular, slime molds can move across a surface, like a rotting log, and ingest other unicellular organisms or bacteria or fungal spores. Yeah, you heard me right, they can move. And not just in any direction they want, they go intelligently. These groups of organisms have been shown to solve mazes. In one case, a researcher grew a slime mold in the center of a petri dish and placed different food resources along the sides of the petri dish. This was to simulate Tokyo and the cities surrounding it. Since slime molds don't really like harsh light, Light was used to simulate obstacles in the area, like mountains or lakes. And the roots that the slime mold eventually figured out looked remarkably like Tokyo's real-life rail system. Pretty amazing for creatures with no brains. But to me this really speaks to how any of us, slime mold or human, can really accomplish amazing things when we work together. It's a weird world out there. Thanks for joining me today. Keep your eyes open and we'll see you again soon.